Uh, welcome, everyone. So this is the uh, last session of the day. So I hope you still got the energy to go through our session. Um, so we, we have three speakers. So uh, let's uh, just introduce ourselves. Uh, sir, uh, Mr. I'm uh, Jim Golden. Uh, you can thank last night for that picture. Um, I'm an IT specialist at uh, NIST, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. I'm an OpenStack operator. And uh, I run GPUs on our cloud. Um. Uh, I'm Justin. I'm a performance engineer at Red Stat, at Red Hat, and uh, I enjoy running and using accelerators. Uh, I'm also a big fan of rockets. Yeah, uh, I'm Howard Huang. I'm a standard engineer from Huawei, and uh, cur uh, the current uh, caretaking PTL for the Cyborg project. Uh, this is a picture uh, we took at the Atlanta PTG. Uh, with other teammates. Uh, so this talk uh, will uh, consist of four parts. So uh, I will first introduce a little bit the uh, uh, background, uh, go down the history lane, and then Jim will uh, provide the requirements that gather from the scientific working group uh, on HPC especially. And then Justin will uh, give a deep dive uh, introduction of the uh, cyborg project. So, what is current status? What, uh, like, what are we developing? Uh, what are uh, our specs? And then we'll go over our uh, future works and plans. Okay. So, I want to start with a quote uh, from J uh, James Hamilton, uh, VP Engineering of Amazon. So this is a quote uh, actually from uh, a blog post uh, recently he wrote for his uh, famous perspective blog. Uh, I think uh, this like represents uh, like m most of the thinking of the cyborg team is that accelerator is no more just like a icing uh, on the cake. It will be a uh, requirement rather than just an option. And uh, as we all know, Amazon like uh, rolled out uh, the instance uh, on FPGA and GPU last year uh, during the reunion. And I think it, it is a uh, very clear signal to the industry and uh, market that we are ready for a, uh, a, a, a period and, uh, for the accelerators. OK. Uh, so. Actually, we have been uh, uh, having the conversations uh, on accelerators for a uh, considerable long time, I think. Uh, so the conversation first started actually in the standard uh, organization uh, in Etsy, which is a telco standard organization. Uh, so when they draft uh, the, st uh, the standards for NFV, which is a network uh, function virtualization, uh, operators that uh, came to the uh, working groups that said uh, we need uh, accelerators to do, for example, uh, offloading or uh, to do the IPsec uh, acceleration. Uh, so we form a, a group that are working on a standard document to describe the overall uh, requirement for the accelerations. Uh, at start, we actually don't know what to put there. Uh, we just simply look over at uh, what Nova could provide at the time. But gradually, uh, we found out that there is a, like a, a general requirement that bigger than uh, what Nova could offer uh, at the time. And so uh, I think that that was part of the origin of the thoughts to have a, a open source project that doing the uh, management, especially the management for the uh, accelerators. Uh, they, then came the OPMV uh, DPAC project, uh, which uh, uh, so within the DPAC project, we have a more specific uh, requirement that drawn uh, for the acceleration management. And then uh, OPMV, uh, you know, is a, a open source integration platform. It does, well, uh, it do some of the coding, but it basically just do integration. Uh, then it, uh, it, it, it turns out that we need an upstream project for DPAC that actually do the coding. So th that's when we start the project called Nomad uh, in OpenStack that we 
try to uh, develop this accelerator uh, management for NFV for the telco requirements. And then uh, I and Michael Polino from uh, Virtual Open Systems uh, held a uh, boss session back in the Austin Summit because we want to uh, be sure whether this is also a requirement from the OpenSec community because we often find that the requirement from the OpenMV side does not you know, necessarily match uh, the OpenSec community's uh, requirements. But then we found that uh, the desire and uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the requirement we found uh, within the OpenSec community is much larger uh, than we thought. And then this uh, like enables the transition to the current uh, cyber project. So during the Barcelona summit, we have a design session uh, to collect like uh, uh, thoughts from uh, interested parties. And then we found that uh, we have uh, the uh, requirement for acceleration management, uh, not only from NFV, but from HPC, from public cloud. Uh, that's when we decide to truly form a, uh, a open sec uh, new project that uh, will uh, officially like address this issue. Uh, so we like we we, we do uh, a uh, like polling and voting on the on the naming and actually Jim came out with the cyborg name and it got like unanimous vote and. Uh, some quick facts, so uh, we are a new project, not uh, official project yet, and we actually developed uh, the code from zero. So we are now uh, reviewing the specs, and after the specs are all freezed, we will uh, start the actual code development, and we follow the four opens uh, principles. So everything, uh, the discussion, design, review, everything is in the open. You can trace it uh, on the wiki, anywhere you can find. So. We have a weekly meeting uh, on Wednesday uh, on the ARC channel. And you, you, if you have like any questions, you could just send an email with acceleration in the subject uh, to the mailing list. And uh, you could find uh, uh, our meeting minutes there, uh, wiki. And if you are interested, like uh, which companies are participating, just look at the stack latest, okay, for the stats. And then uh, without further ado, I Hand it over to Jim. Okay, so um, scientific working group. I have the, the aim of the scientific working group up here, but essentially it's to um, promote scientific computing on top of OpenStack. Um, so why would you want to do that? Um, historically, scientific computing has been associated with HPC. Um, in HPC, clusters are generally fairly rigid. Um, you have your, your um, workload manager, you've got your MPI, and your, your bare metal servers. You're, you're limited to the libraries that are on there, and, and you're kind of limited to the, the setup. Um, but scientific computing is varies quite a bit. You've got everything from big data to data science to um, AI, deep learning, um, neural networks, all those type of things. And so running these types of workloads on top of OpenStack gives you um, a greater amount of flexibility and a, uh, a a management layer to manage these workloads. Um, so these these types of types of, of research, there's all kinds of research, and so typically, as I said, high performance computing performance is important. So a lot of times, accelerators are used. Um, I may be preaching to the choir here, but accelerators are used to um, speed up your perform your um, your workloads. The accelerators are typically GPUs, FPGAs. You can do SRI via networking, um, and 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 those are used generally for, for specific workloads. Um, and when you're using accelerators like that, you, you need to monitor, monitor them and um, examine the telemetry. And um, they're, there's, they're not easy to use. And they're even more difficult to use in OpenStack. Um, so to give you an example, um, we use GPUs in our current stack. And so you can use GPUs in OpenStack. It's not easy per se. Um, first, you have to set up some BIOS parameters. You have to set some kernel settings. You have to do some whitelisting, blacklisting, um, set up configuration in Nova on your compute and on your controllers. Um, and then once you get that set up, you have to have specific flavors. Um, it's assuming you're doing PCI pass-through. 
you have to set up flavors that, uh, that connect to those specific um, GPUs. And then once you get that all working, it may be working, but it may not have the performance. Um, then to get the performance you need, you'll also have to do KVM tuning. Um, that involves CPU pinning, NUMA topologies, um, huge memory pages, et cetera. And then, once you get that all working, you kind of have two options of how to manage it. You, have, uh, a heter you can have a heterogeneous host system where you've got GPU systems and CPUs mixed. Um, this has good and bad parts of it. The good is that all of your CPU resources, resources are available. Um, so when you have a full stack, you don't have any wasted CPUs. The bad is that Nova Scheduler doesn't prioritize your GPU workloads. So if you've got a, a GPU-enabled host that's full of instances, um, you're going to have to manually go through and potentially move instances off of there to allow your, your GPU-enabled workloads to run. Um, an alternative is you can set up uh, GPU-only host aggregates. Um, when you do that, your GPU hosts are segregated but that's also a bad thing because they're seg segregated. So your CPU workloads can't burst over into those, those hosts because they're separated. So there's not a great way to handle this, and you end up micromanaging your instances. And when you're micromanaging instances, your cattle become suspiciously pet-like. Um, so what we need is Cyborg as a framework to manage these systems so you can, um, you, you, you can attach and detach instances, um, sorry, uh, accelerators or other special devices to your instances. Um, similar, similar to how you can detach and attach storage, but not only that, but it's a, a framework to manage it. So you can attach and detach your instances, but you can also set up the, um, the, the NUMA topology and the CPU pinning to be all done at the same time. So you have, you have a driver that takes care of everything and you don't have to write individual scripts that only you use and you can share those. So that's kind of a teaser to what's possible with Cyborg. I'm gonna hand it over to Justin now to explain a little more. Okay, so I'm gonna start by going into uh, why I believe that Cyborg is a tool for everyone. And uh, sorry, we're sort of repeating ourselves between ourselves, but uh, Acceleration is going to be mandatory into the future. Uh, and if we want to derive that sort of from first principles of computing here, uh, as die shrinks continue to slow down, uh, your single core performance is not increasing very quickly, if at all. Parallelism is increasing, but traditional uh, x86 uh, dynamically scheduled CPUs, they don't make good use of parallelism. That die space can go to, CPU, uh, can go to GPU resources that are much more efficient. So essentially, unless you are willing to scale out forever, uh, and that's sort of driven the need to move from scale up to scale out is the lack of hardware performance increase, uh, you, things aren't going to get any faster. Customers and your workloads are going to continue to get bigger though. So we're sort of at an impasse where things need acceleration. They need more specialized hardware if they want to continue to advance at the rate we've enjoyed for the past decade. Um, when I made up this slide, the prospect of FPGAs and Intel CPUs was sort of far off, but in between when I made this slide and now, Intel has announced that we can expect to see FPGAs and its CPUs in the next couple of years. So this isn't going to be a problem of, hey, accelerators are these specialized things for network function virtual, for NFV or scientific computing. It's going to be, I bought this rack of servers, they have a ton of FPGAs in them, how am I going to use that? So we need, uh, OpenStack needs a solid solution to that problem. And to get into why we need Cyborg specifically, doesn't this belong in Nova? Well, yes, a lot of it does. Specifically, some of the PCI attachment stuff, much of the placement stuff is all Nova placement API. It's all going to be Nova API additions or modifications. What Cyborg is for is for life cycle management of accelerators to keep you from having to go and find machines that have a GPU. Let's say you have a server and like, uh, well, let's say you have a data center and you have one user who needs to use machine learning applications. Right now you will spend more time babying those machines than you will spend on the entire rest of your cloud. And that's just not feasible. We need it to be possible for you to place an accelerator into any one of your machines and have a management framework handle 
the complexities of making sure that the accelerator is there, installed, set up, instances go to the right place, and everything just works. So, yeah, this gets into yeah, animations. Anyways, this gets into, wow. Anyways, this gets into how we intend to use the Nova, uh, the Nova Placement API to make sure that things actually end up in the right spot. This is relatively new. It only came out in 10 or uh, Newton, and it's getting fleshed out in the next couple of releases. So whereas previously, uh, people who used accelerators, GPUs, whatever, in OpenStack had to perform their own scheduling hacks, we now have a more standardized method of getting instances to the right spot. And with the addition of reservation APIs and other things of that nature, we can actually get into solving the problem of making sure that your instances are open and you can use your accelerators without having to write really horrible scripts. And in the end, that's sort of the point of Cyborg. There's, nothing, there's going to be nothing super revolutionary in this talk. This is organization. People who are using uh, these accelerators for HPC or NFV are already scripting all of these things. They're already doing all of these things, just not in a way where they can be easily contributed upstream and consumed by everybody else. The goal of Cyborg is to centralize that effort so that we can benefit from each other's work. Let's see if I can, yes, okay. So this gets into the sort of, well, the real heart of Cyborg is the idea of drivers that we can use in the cloud. You're like, drivers, that sounds kind of scary. Aren't they those C things that people have to understand the kernel to write? And no, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is probably what everybody who has set up an accelerator on OpenStack already has, which is an Ansible playbook or some sort of automation tool to install the actual binary driver, make sure it's on, make sure things are working, uh, the basic things that we as OpenStack administrators have to do in our day-to-day -day lives. You probably have, uh, well, if you've administrated a cloud with GPUs, you probably have a decent portion of a Cyborg driver on your hard drive already, sitting there languishing not to be used by the community. So the driving force behind Cyborg is really as a management framework for these drivers, which we will make as easy to write as possible uh, and by minimizing the number of functions that you are required to implement and keeping them as abstract as, as we can. Uh, there are unfortunately some complexities of the accelerators you can't really avoid, like programming FPGAs. But anyways, yes, we really want to make a standard. We want, we want it so that we can all get together and have vendors, users, and manufacturers have a single target to get an accelerator working on OpenStack instead of handing us hardware and a binary driver and saying, here, you figure it out. Um, a word of caution about standards. So I figured it was a good idea to include the comic to try and remind us as we design the requirements for a driver that we need to be very careful about what we do when we make our standards, lest we only exacerbate the problem. Okay, so here we get into the actual structure of Cyborg. And there are two or three slides of diagrams we're going to go through uh, about how things work and where things are. So the Cyborg API is the API endpoint that you will be interacting with as a user and an administrator. Um, it's really fairly boring. It takes commands and passes them to other components that actually do stuff. Uh, Cyborg Conductor, um, which actually wasn't there when we made this presentation like two days ago. Definitely in design right now. But anyway, Cyborg Conductor essentially exists to aggregate DB requests and make sure that we don't destroy whatever the database is by having too many agents trying to send data to it. Um, we're not too fixed on what we want to select for the database right now, so it's possible we could select one where, the ag where we wouldn't need the conductor, but eh, it's not a big deal either way. Now, the Cyborg agent actually resides on the compute nodes uh, as opposed to your controllers. And my vision for the Cyborg agent is that it does nothing but run drivers. Because uh, there's a dizzying possibility of accelerators. What if you have a 
PCIe encryption accelerator, which I didn't know people were actually using until earlier today? What if you have a GPU, an FPGA? What if the FP um, what if the FPGA is on your CPU? What if it's not? What if it's USB? What if you want to send instructions to some remote accelerator that's somewhere else in your data center? There's a dizzying number of possibilities, and we are not out to create the one true model of acceleration. We are out to try and standardize our scripting and make our lives bearable trying to administrate these things. So the majority of the complexity is pushed off to the driver which has functions such as attach, detach, install, update, et cetera. And the agent simply gets onto the compute host and has, takes all of its drivers and runs, and runs the detect accelerator function and says, hey, do we have this accelerator here? Yes, this machine has a GPU. I should report that to the agent who's going to send it to the conductor who puts it into the database so that now you know hey, this compute host is the one that ended up having the GPU in it. That's great. We can talk to Nova and figure out how to schedule jobs there, uh, schedule instances there. We'll go into a little bit more detail about how we communicate with Nova in, I think, two slides from now. So here we have sort of a breakdown of the responsibilities. This is kind of what I just talked about as I went through the other diagram. Um, yeah, there's not anything I didn't already talk about except for monitoring utilization and usage, usage statistics, which is a uh, problem that we need to solve for scheduling. Uh, the driver will need to implement some sort of monitoring function. Otherwise, how do we know when an accelerator is fully utilized? Uh, this isn't a problem you have with current hardware pass-through. If you just pass through a PCI device, your utilization is binary. It's either taken or it's not. But what if it's an acceleration? Um, um, what if it's the sort of accelerator that you can distribute easily? At that point, you need to monitor it like CPU utilization or memory utilization. And it gets slightly more complicated. But so long as the driver provides some sort of even monitoring stat, we don't really have to look too deeply into that. Um, now, Nova integration is actually the real kicker with Cyborg, and it's where most of the effort will probably end up invested. Because a lot of the responsibilities that Cyborg has need to be performed by Nova. Well, a lot of the responsibilities that Cyborg has from the perspective of the end user. From your perspective, you ask Cyborg for an instance with an accelerator attached. And that means that it has to get Nova to spawn that instance, get Nova to do the attachment, because Cyborg doesn't necessarily know where the instance will end up unless we insert ourselves into the scheduling process somehow, which isn't good. And lots of people had this same problem, hence the placement API that we've been over a couple of times now. Uh, but currently, Nova, uh, Nova's PCI pass-through is very naive. As we talked about before, you have to whitelist individual devices. You need to bounce Nova services to do this. Uh, so you need to go and write to the config file, then restart Nova. Uh, this isn't very nice. And we'll probably have to extend Nova to allow us to live add devices to this whitelist at the very least. Um, yeah, so this integration is going to require a good deal of work, unfortunately. But we think that it's feasible and that it represents the right distribution of responsibilities between projects. Uh, Cyborg isn't going to eat your cloud. That's not our goal here that takes over all of the services. Uh, but this means that Cyborg and Nova will be working together very closely, and it's going to be one of the more difficult parts to develop. Um, yeah, so actually, there are a few more things I wanted to cover here. Uh, this is a preliminary design, uh, like uh, Howard already said. We're just wrapping up the specs phase, and we'd really appreciate it if people would come forward and ask us about problems or use cases we might not have considered. Because, like I said, this is a standardization effort. If this were just us trying to make our current hardware work, we would create a hacky series of scripts, do all of the work ourselves, and then not contribute it upstream, hence perpetuate the problem. Uh, so we need to try and help support everybody's use case and make something where we can all come together and work on it and uh, hopefully save ourselves a lot of time and effort and prepare OpenStack for a future where people need accelerators to run their regular daily workloads. 
Uh, with that, I think I'll hand it back off to Howard for future goals. Thank you. So um, Justin just uh, described and uh, explained the current status of development uh, in Cyborg, what is our current uh, architecture is. And here are a few items that uh, at least we think uh, should be part of our future work. Uh, one thing is, uh, well, of course, to finish the code development after we uh, finally be able to uh, freeze all the specs that in Pike. And uh, the second is to have uh, more contributors. And I, I think especially f uh, from the vendors that uh, build these actually Returns and to 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 enable us to uh, better understand what are the u uh, real use cases they are building their devices uh, for the customers, uh, where are the like the, the the real gap is and where are the uh, you know the, the the things that we need to pay extra attention to. Um, so the th second point is to uh, work with like a scientific working group and uh, maybe other related working groups to uh, to have uh, the uh, cyborg related requirement uh, coming over here and uh, we want we want to be able to fulfill them and also uh, you know looking for uh, POC opportunities so that uh, people could actually uh, test whether cyborg is working. So we want to avoid that we just develop something that works well for the unit test, for the smoke test. Uh, we want cyborg to uh, actually functioning. And uh, so a little bit further in Queen, uh, we think uh, we want the basic support for FPG and general purpose GPU uh, to be to be available uh, for cyborg and uh, another part outside of uh, OpenStack community uh, we have also a couple of items that involves uh, cross community efforts uh, the first one is that kubernetes uh, recently uh, very recently I think kicked off the uh, CDI uh, proposal design and I think uh, cyborg uh, could be and should be part of the effort uh, since if you look at the uh, the uh, available like CRI or CNI designs this interface will basically be running uh, like uh, in a container so as long as cyborg could provide a restful API uh, you should be uh, like uh, little problem uh, for Cyborg to provide services for uh, for Kubernetes, uh, no matter the language we are written in. And the second, uh, OpenCL. I think I have heard a lot uh, from folks that are doing uh, GPU work that OpenCL uh, would be an uh, important aspect that we might uh, look into. But uh, I, I don't think we have like a counterpart in the FPGA world, right? The a common programming language. And uh, the last item will be, again, the DPAC project. So if uh, there's like requirement or needs for an integration, so I think we are happy to, 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 to provide the cyber uh, source code and perform the integration into the OPMV uh, platform. Okay, the last slide I, 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 I want to uh, pay tribute or uh, uh, just thanks to uh, the Cyborg uh, meeting participants and contributors that have not been able to make to Boston. Uh, so uh, Justin is the author for the agent and conductor spec. Uh, I'm responsible for the API and database. Uh, Roman uh, actually is responsible for the Cyborg Nova interaction spec. So. He, He's kind of like our go-to guy when uh, everything involves NOAA. So he's been uh, a big help uh, for the Cyborg project. So uh, Russell from uh, Lenovo is the, the author for the uh, generic driver spec. So we want to have an uh, entry uh, generic driver that do the uh, minimal uh, like set of cap capabilities, a common denominator, and have all the like vendor drivers uh, live out of the tree. 
And then Harm uh, Suleiman also from Huawei provide the, the uh, FPGA proposals. Uh, Moshe and Eden from Mellanox uh, did the uh, uh, Nakasa uh, proposal. Uh, actually, that was the first time uh, like how to utilize the resource provider uh, that uh, school of thought got introduced to the cyborg team. And uh, Michelle, I uh, just mentioned, uh, Michelle and I uh, kicked off the Nomad BOF discussion back in Austin. So he has been uh, a great help on the uh, virtual switch side. So they have prototypes or products on the uh, uh, ARM-based uh, and with accelerator uh, this composition of uh, virtual switch implementations. And then uh, Michael Luke from Nokia. I, I, I know Mike, uh, Mike from Etsy's world, so we, we have been like uh, for years. So um, really thanks to uh, all the people that have uh, contributed to the discussion as well as the spec writing for Cyborg to enable us uh, to be a, pro a new project from really nothing. So if you like trace the wiki history, it's actually just from nothing uh, to the place where we are. Okay, so thank you very much. I think this uh, is the, uh, I have a few questions uh, before the end here. So um, we ended a little early, and um, I'm going to pretend like that's intentional. Uh, so I have some questions, particularly about the audience here. Uh, how many of you are, uh, because I want to figure out uh, who's interested in this sort of project and how we can better tune our efforts to them. Uh, raise your hand if you are more in research rather than industry. Okay, and vice versa? Okay, um, so how many of you would be interested in a couple of accelerators in your cloud, and how many need an entirely accelerated cloud? Uh, sorry, couple first. Okay, and how many need an entirely accelerated cloud? How many people aren't even sure if they need accelerators? <laughs> no one. Yes, I managed to sell everyone on the idea of accelerators. I'll call this talk a success for that alone. Um, okay, yeah. I had a few more questions in mind, mostly going along the lines of uh, how many people, of what sort of technologies are people interested in using acceleration for? Uh, sp uh, no. Vice versa, what sort of technologies are people using in acceleration? Um, of those of you who are using GPUs, uh, how many would you say you're locked into CUDA or locked into some NVIDIA technology? Uh, well, okay. That's probably a bad question to ask because it's <laughs> like asking, uh, well, anyways, it's like asking somebody to say bad things about themselves. It's not going to work out. Uh, so really, uh, we want to try and make this easy for people to use. And we're going to need some contributors to help, uh, to help make that happen, depending on what use cases people have. Uh, so I'm hoping people will come and uh, work upstream and end up on Howard's next acknowledgement slide. Um, and, he'll spend, and he'll take the time to read out everyone's names, which is great. Uh, let's I see. I already did. Yeah, and yeah. then we have a nice annotated version of the <laughs> Nova interaction, because it's a lot more complicated then I'd like to gloss over. Uh, if you want to know more details, you can come up and talk to me. Uh, thanks for your time. And uh, mm -hmm. if you have questions, please go to the microphone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and all the technical questions will go to Justin. <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. So I, I do have a question. Um, so the, the types of acceleration that you primarily seem to be uh, looking at are seem to be solutions that would be uh, uh, resources that don't tend to touch the rest of, say, OpenStack resources. I, uh, I work for Netronome, and we make hardware acceleration for networking mm -hmm. in OpenStack. And so I was wondering um, if, your, uh, if this project will be able to provision resources that also you know, touch, say, the networking. I mean, there, yes, we can do you know, we can create solutions that are just using simple SRIOV assignment, but as you cited in this talk, and I 100% agree, there are times where you uh, need finer control over allocation of resources that are on the card, uh, say in our smart NICs, than just you have this device or you don't. And so we, I'd be very interested to know if how Cyborg is planning on hooking into Nova will also be able to 
uh, manipulate, say, the assignment of network devices to the, uh, to the, uh, to the VM. Okay, so this gets into what can you do with drivers? Yeah. And uh, we've had this discussion with several people uh, who are interested in varying use cases. Maybe some of them just don't want to schedule machines on anything that's a NUMA machine, because they have something that really just hates NUMA for some reason. So drivers are really just scripts. If you didn't notice, that was sort of the point of my whole explanation there, is that uh, Anything you can do with the script can be a cyborg driver. So this comes, so you get this weird uh, middle road where it's possible to do pure uh, tuning tasks as drivers. And whether or not that's a good idea or another hacky pattern is a subject of some debate. But it's something that we are happy to support for the time being, especially if there is a lot of users who are interested in it. Because like I said before, we're trying to get people together when it comes to accelerating their workloads, not necessarily try and state that we know what's best for your cloud. Um, as far as modifying OpenStack services itself, uh, the problem I think you're going to run into there is more along the lines of you need to bounce services. Uh, so let's say you want to try and accelerate Neutron somehow. And this is across your controllers or some part of the cloud itself. And you go and you modify this, you install this software, well, now you've got to bounce a bunch of services. And sure, a driver can do that, but uh, when could Cyborg safely run it? Uh, that, it? It gets into the problem where the user could do something like say, oh yeah, I would love accelerated Neutron, let's turn that on, and their production cloud falls over. So we would need some way to mark drivers as, oh no, don't run this while your cloud's running and then have Cyborg create warnings about that. But once again, this feeds into our warning, cautionary tale. Be careful about spec creep. The more people have to implement for these drivers, uh, the more concerned we need to be about people not contributing their stuff upstream. The bigger the gap gets between, I wrote a quick little script to install uh, all the stuff I need to make my accelerator work, and this is a full driver. We want to keep that very small uh, to the point where I would be happy if people had some strange accelerator and they contributed like, here's an install script, here's how you get utilization, and we could just wrap it up very easily and then merge it, uh, versus some constantly feature creeping driver API that uh, we have to maintain and we have to convince people to maintain. Um, so that's why for at least our first release, we're focusing on what people are doing now, which is PCI pass through and basic device pass through maybe some stuff like pinning CPU nodes. Uh, but then we can try and expand once we've got a better idea of what our capabilities are. Because the Nova placement API is actually changing very frequently right now. And there's certain stuff that's not supported yet that may be supported in the future. So we'll be happy to try and accommodate your use case. But uh, there's a lot of complexities here that we're trying to hide. And uh, I don't want to make everybody have to run headlong into them. Perfect. Yeah. Let, let me ask a, a simplified version of that, because <laughs> it, it, you're right, there, it, there could be a whole lot of edge cases and use cases. Um, a, a simplified version of that would be, let's say that, that uh, somebody said, okay, I want, I want a, a, a hardware accelerated um, network interface. Okay, so that's, that's fine. You can assign the PCI pass through, through Cyborg, but would Nova realize that that satisfies a network interface connectivity requirement as well? That gets into resource providers, and Nova has a resource provider API. So whether or not we can step in and say, hey, Nova, you have this base resource that's not a user-defined resource, and that's a network, um, and that's a NIC, and we're creating a resource provider that's also a base resource. You know, whether or not it supports that, I have no idea. But yes. I don't think they'd be opposed to that idea. Yeah, so I think uh, basically we'll uh, create a resource class to describe your uh, accelerators and uh, with the traits that actually identify, for example, this is a network accelerator. And back to your first question, uh, in a general direction, uh, a, a, a simple answer would be yes, uh, because net, like, uh, s uh, smart NIC cards will be one of the central like uh, use cases for Cyborg. Uh, actually, I have been working with uh, Nabil from Naturalum uh, on SCSI for, for about two or three years on that subject. So, uh, and I also want to 
like add a, 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 a networking acceleration use cases. So I, I just watched uh, a, a NetDevConf uh, video recently. So there was a talk given by an uh, Oracle engineer. Uh, he mentioned that uh, when you run a, a relational database uh, workload on the cloud, the network throughput is absolutely vital. So they have done some tuning. Uh, one aspect is that they try to use UDP. And then uh, in order to accelerate things, they uh, have to offload the UDP checksum on the, on the NIC card. So that's where the uh, smart NIC cards come in, like from Naturalum or KVM. Or, so I, I believe this is actually not just for NFV, but this is actually a general uh, use case and very good use case. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, so thank you. I think we'll, the, the, the answer then is we'll have to try and you know, collaborate with you yep. guys and, mm -hmm. sure. and give you uh, help out. So I had one more question, um, different question, mm -hmm. which is uh, how are you contemplating at this point um, any notion uh, of uh, live migration within this framework? Oh, yeah, live it's migration it's a is a fun but, subject. But, but there, and there are some devices that you can't live migrate, but there are some that you could. So yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. So once again, that's back to something we'd want as a flag in the driver if we wanted to support it. And uh, there was some talk about that earlier today in the Nova placement API um, in the in the Nova meeting, which turned sort of into a place well, sort of into a placement API meeting. Um, so the problem is that live migration doesn't always work, and it's a very and uh, assuming that it works. Uh, as a fundamental for Cyborg would be a rather large dependency to add. And uh, we're not going get to in get into that right now. But in the ideal world, it would be really great if you could fully schedule a machine and like with normal compute instances, and then somebody comes along with a GPU instance and you're just like, eh, you know, we'll just take all these instances and live migrate them somewhere else and put the GPU instances on here. Um, it'd be really nice to be that lackadaisical with people's in uh, instances, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> so. Until live migration works really well, I'm not optimistic. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Looks like we have another question. So, on that flow chart that you had, where, for the, especially I guess the backup one, where you uh, have all the little numbers. Yeah. Well, the backup one is kind of, you know, if, if it's, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but yeah. I noticed one of the questions that I had was if, if I want something. Am I coming to Cyborg or am I coming to Nova still? Is, is Cyborg going to drive Nova and I, I have to make my request to Cyborg or is it somehow just feeding information to Nova and I still make my request to Nova? Okay. Uh, I'll be entirely honest. I pretended like you make your request to Cyborg earlier, but I'm not sure about that yet. Because if you make a re request to Nova, you would need to have some standardized tag in either the flavor, in your call, we don't want to change Nova command line commands because that would be, I don't know, sort of bad. Um, so you need to give the information to Nova, and then Cyborg would have to like sit and watch for it. Is that a good idea? Do we really want to watch every instance boot and be like, oh, does this one have an accelerator? Do I need to insert myself? Yeah, OK. That is another good question. Then we get into hot plugging PCI devices into instances because the instance has started. Uh, so should we sh take this instance that has finished spawning, shut it down, attach a PCI device, and start it back up? Well, I mean, you can hot plug PCIe. Okay. So now, I I'm aware that's supposed to be possible, but I have no idea how like the difference between possible and you can do it and it really works. Yeah. Um, so if somebody could tell me that that really worked, then I would be happy to sort of go that route. This is, this is where we're missing some research. Yeah. Uh, and these are gaps that are going to be, need to be filled as we implement. Yeah. So we, we, we are currently discussing this uh, in the uh, cyber NOVA interaction spec. So one of the directions we are looking at is that, uh, well, the placement and resource provider is vital here. So uh, one, one way you could do this is that through Cyborg, you prepare all the uh, accelerators that you need. And then uh, the Cyborg conductor will uh, notify the placement uh, API that, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, he, uh, he will like, populate the Cyborg information to the compute, to the NOAA compute manager, so that NOAA compute manager, the inventory got Cyborg's uh, 
information with all the resource classes you know just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and then uh, the resource tracker will like uh, notify the placement API. Hey, this is all the uh, resource I got plus the accelerator ones, and then when uh, user calling the NOAA API to, you know, the, the standard way of spawning instances. And uh, when you, like, through the placement API, then it knows the scheduling decisions will be decided upon the resource, uh, like, plus the accelerator resources. And then decisions will be made. So this is just one of directions that we are looking at. But, uh, you know, feel, feel free to, like, review, help review the spec, uh, comment on spec, and Obviously, there's a, a lot of things have been written to talk to the Nova APIs, no. mm -hmm. and you don't want all of those things to either not support accelerators or have to be rewritten to talk to cyborg APIs. Yeah, so especially you know, like as you're saying, in the future, accelerators become more and more mm -hmm. of a you know thing, and you don't want you know, you know everybody, you don't want cyborg and you know have to become the, the bottleneck. Of everything yeah, yeah, and through. I agree with you wholeheartedly, um, but. These things that are already coded to talk to Nova are not going to magically figure out how to add tags either. So, no. I mean, there, yeah. there's, there's work either way. It's yeah. just a question um, about why. So, um, I'm sorry to sort of interrupt you, but uh, the guys back here have been working all day, and we should probably, and we're over on time. So, you can come up and talk to me personally once we yeah, get yeah. this all shut down and they can leave and all of yeah. that. Uh, that sound good? Cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much.